Hey you guys, Mr. Waltz here. Going to show you how to do dimensioning example two. So you can see here it's a pretty simple shape. It's a block with a rectangular chunk taken out. So um, get Fusion going. Open your data panel. We're going to make a new project. We'll call it Fun Dimentals of Dimensioning. And I'm going to call mine Demo because I'm this is a demonstration, but you can just call yours uh, Fundamentals of Dimensioning. I'm going to hit Enter. Double-click on it to make it active. Um, then go over here in my Untitled. I'm going to go ahead and set my grids and snaps. I'm going to turn off my um, Snap to Grid. Then my Grid Settings. I'm going to change it to Fixed 1 Inch for Subdivisions. It doesn't matter that much, but I like to have it that way. I'm going to click uh, Create Sketch and go here on the front or XY plane. Um, so this thing, like we said, it's just a rectangle with a rectangular piece come out. Um, the overall rectangular size is 2 inches wide, 1.5 tall. So I'm just going to go in here, draw a rectangle, 2 width, hit tab, 1.5 tall, hit Enter. There's the basic rectangle. Um, and then I got to figure out what's going on. Well, there's a rectangular cutout. So I need, remember on this thing here, I need the size of this and I need the location. So the size of it is 0.5 width and one inch tall. And the location is that it's on the top edge of this thing. This is where the top of this cutout is. And that the, uh, it's one inch from the left side. So what I'm going to do is just go in here and draw a rectangle. I'll start up here on top and go down and it's 0.5 wide tab one inch tall enter and then you can see it's blue it needs more dimensions d for dimension click that corner of the rectangle click this corner of the big rectangle and we're going to make that one inch and there it is so then we can finish our sketch we can go to our home view extrude I'm going to extrude that part, and you can see it's 0.75 depth, 0.75. There it is, okay? So I'm going to hit save, call this example 2, and hit save. So now we got that done. So now what we need to do is make the drawing of it. So I'm just going to go to the file menu, new drawing from design, um, create new. Choose your template. Hopefully, now that you've used the template, it should be there. WPHSA. If it's not there, just hit Browse, and you can go through your projects and find it. It should be in um, Fusion Multi-View Drawing. There it is. So you can find it there if it's not showing, but it should be there. Click OK. Here's our blank drawing, and we're going to place a base view. So we got to decide on the scale. One to one looks like it'll fit. My question is whether two to one will fit. And that looks like it's going to be iffy. So I'm going to leave it at one to one. So I'll put one view here. Hit OK. And then I'm going to add in the other views. So I use a projected view tool right up here. Click on your parent view. Go up to the top. Click. Go over to the right. Click. And go up to the top right. And click. When you're done, hit this check mark. And now you've got your views. I'm going to double click on this isometric view. Change it to shaded. Ta-da. And now it's dimension time. Okay, so let's look at this. We'll just copy this, but we'll talk about it. So we do need to show the depth. So the top view is a good place to do it. D dimension, put that in on the right edge. Now let's notice something about this drawing. Notice how many views there are. There's two views. Um, so basically, if we do all the dimensions for this, you can do all the dimensions just using the top view and the front view. So we actually don't need this view. We can click on it and erase it. It's pretty cool. 
save space. We probably could go to a bigger scale, but let's just keep going. We need, um, on this guy, you can see we have overall height, overall width. Um, and then we have the height and width of the cutout and then the location of the cutout. So we'll do the innermost dimensions first. You can see there's layers. We start, do the inside ones, the smaller ones, and then you do the outer one last. Let me show you why. If you go in and do D for dimension and do the overall width of this, and then try to dimension the distance here and place that, what happens is the lines cross over each other. That's no good. Don't want to cross lines. So what we do is we do the opposite order, D for dimension. We do this edge first, then we do the outer one. All right. This one here, need a dimension there. Boom. So now we've got that position over here on the right. We'll do the same thing. We're going to show the height of this cutout measured from the top down. So we'll use this corner here and this corner here. Now, as you move to the right, it'll want to make what's called an aligned dimension. I don't want that. I want a vertical dimension. So what I have to do is move my mouse straight over to the right and it'll force it to do a, a vertical. It's a little tricky. There we go. I got it to go where I wanted. Um, and then the last one to do is the overall height of this, which is this edge here. These are all D for dimension right now. And that's good to go. You could add more decimal places if you want, but actually this is just fine like this. Um, if you did want to add decimal places, hit escape, double click on the dimensions. You could change the linear precision to get more decimal places. Okay. Um, guess what, guys? That one's done. And you can see it automatically says it's example two, what project it is, who made it, when they made it, the scale, the sheet number. Later on, we'll do projects with multiple sheets. Um, so it's good to go. So I'm just going to save this bad boy, hit the save button. You see it'll automatically come up with a name, which is example two drawing, and that's just fine. And you can hit save. And then remember what you want to do next is do export PDF all sheets. If you choose open PDF, it'll give you a preview of what you made. That's always good to do. Um, and then save it in your downloads folder. And it should pop up with a preview. You can make sure that it looks like what it's supposed to look like. And then just go into classroom and turn that file in and you're done. See you on example three.